terrifying. <laughs> this is my first ever breakfast ramen. The noodles are interesting. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Journey Across Japan, non-stop north. 2,000 kilometers, 21 days on the road, and this morning we're in Aomori City, the capital of Aomori Prefecture. Oh. oh, I'm not going to lie, I am recovering. I'm recovering from having eaten all the fish in the sea. Yesterday, Shara and I ate the biggest tuna bowl in all of Japan. Go and check that out. Watch the sheer spectacle of us devouring an entire tuna. Uh. Oh, oh But I love Aomori for one reason, and one reason alone. It is the home of cider. And to the left of me, we have the A Factory, the shrine, the modern day shrine to all that is apples. And we're gonna go in there in a minute and meet today's guest. But before that, there's something equally spectacular just over here. Imagine an event so bright and so colorful, it makes even Las Vegas look like a dimly lit library. The Nebuta Festival, held every August, is perhaps the most visually striking festival in Japan's calendar. And certainly Aomori's claim to fame is the expertly crafted five meter high floats light up the streets throughout town. And thankfully, if you're unable to experience the festival in person, the Aomori Nebuta Museum offers a chance to witness these terrifying marvels all year round. So these striking floats are called Nebuta floats. And every year in summer, Aomori hosts one of the three biggest festivals in all of North Japan using these incredibly stunning pieces of artwork. What I love about Nebuta floats is they use this kind of folklore from Buddhism. And uh, it's often quite violent and graphic in some cases. Like one over there, there's a boar, a wild boar getting ripped to shreds. <laughs> But even though they're so violent and so threatening, they're made from paper mache and they're quite delicate, right? And it takes like dozens of people to carry these things through the town and they're just so visually striking and incredible. And for me, when I think of Aomori, this is the first thing that always comes to mind. Terrifying. <laughs> cross section you can actually see inside the float right and I think we take it for granted just how difficult it must be to illuminate one of these floats right because look at all the light bulbs underneath the surface tied up with cables and whatnot and then this is just a little bit think about what that must take for an entire float the sheer amount of cabling and wiring to make it as spectacular and illuminated as it actually is but it is very fragile you're allowed to touch this I'm not breaking the rules I've never touched a Nebuta float before. It's ever so slightly thicker, I think, than a Shorji sliding door. Green Goblin, eh? Somebody's been watching Spider-Man. <laughs> look at that boar, what a bloodbath, my God. If you look around these floats though, you'll notice the certain size of them is kind of capped, it's limited. And that's because the size of the road, right, is dictated by the width of it. But our end destination today is Goshagawana, and they've got something even more impressive. It's a float that isn't so much the width, but the height that steals the show. 23 meters high, these floats, towering in a building that looks like it could house the space shuttle. We're we'll going to look at that in a bit, because if you think this is impressive, this will blow your bloody mind. But before that, it's time to go and drink some apple juice. the A factory. If it's got apples in it, it's in here somewhere. So here at the A factory, you can get so much cider, all the cider in Aomori, but there's one brand above all others that's good. It's this one, Kimori Cider Sweet. That's my favorite. In fact, I need not one, not two, not three. That's only three bottles. Okay. I bought all these uh, presents for the team. Keep morale up. We've got apple chocolates, dried apple jellies, dried apples, more chocolate. <sighs> should I give it to the team or should I just devour it myself in the car? I'll give it to the team. And up here on the second floor of the A factory, they've actually got cider vending machines, the greatest invention 
by mankind. You never know what raging alcoholics you might find up here. Oh, look. Like this is it. amazing. This one is so good. I can actually smell the apples from here. But I'm driving. Uh -huh. This is rubbish. Why couldn't it be Colin Esky or Rattro, somebody that could drive? And then they could have driven and I could have got sloshed here instead. So you get what, 800 yen, you get four different so types you can, of You can choose which card you want. I got a 400 yen. <laughs> so I can get two uh, tastings of cider with 400 yen. Can I like inhale it through my <laughs> nose? No. It must be a way. It must be a way. This is so annoying. So in Japan, you can't so much as sniff alcohol and get behind the wheels of the car. In many respects, probably a good idea. Uh, compared to the UK where you can have like one drink and still drive. But it means when you come to places like this, you're fucked if you're driving. Just getting more cider there in the background. Just getting all the cider. Can I smell it? At least let me smell it. Mm. Oh, it's so good. This is, this is rubbish. <laughs> so if for some reason you're confused as to how to use the cider vending machines, they've got this handy dandy how to use notification. It says here, passing the tower to the front of the product that the desired item is coming. Like what? Insert 300 yen coins into the slot of three coins. Turn the handle to the right until the product comes out. Exchange money is a restaurant. <laughs> Please feel free to use a wet towel and a lid. This is, this is left more questions than answers. My God, why not? Just proofread it. Get someone to proofread it. Like, oh. Smells good, Chris. Oh, you son of a bitch. Even Paul the cameraman's <laughs> drinking. This is Charlotte's recommendation, so. Yeah, I've decided this is number one, the Alamori Cider Sweet. Oh, that's good. You mm, bastard. That's pretty really good. It is Cheers, good. Cheers. You're fired. You're fired, Paul, you're fired. You can really taste the apples in this. You can really taste the apples. Fuck you. <laughs> I can smell the apples. That's good enough for me. I don't need to drink the tasty, delicious nectar of the gods, but I can smell it on your breath. Look at this, you've got the side of end machines, and then over here, you've got a wedding chapel. What a great place. Get drunk, have a few ciders, and then get married, job done. As someone who loves cider, I think it's the perfect place to have a wedding. Wouldn't you agree, Charlotte? Why don't you join me for a wedding at the cider chapel? I mean, it's not the worst place you've suggested, I'll take it. <laughs> probably not, probably not. <laughs> but anyway, take us away, what's the challenge of the day? And while you do that, if you can't join them, beat them. This isn't uh, cider, it is in fact apple juice, but better than nothing, isn't it? It's a really good apple juice, to be fair. Mm. Can I open the... Oh, it's so sweet. Okay. Oh. Can I read it? Yeah, I've enjoyed this. We all know how much Chris loves crafting. Don't, Craft really? something in the local area from Batterson 12. <laughs> Batterson 12. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a space station named after a fish and chip shop. I, um, I'd like crafting. Who decided I like crafting? crafting. Do it's I? sarcasm. He's very bad at it, so this should be fun. What's well, the well, local well. craft in the area? Well, it's Nebuta. But I, yeah, let's craft something that takes 800 people in three years to make. <laughs> I think we're going to have to... Is there something smaller? I don't know. We'll have to lower our expectations. But before that, it's time to try the one dish you need to have when you're in Almoy City. What could that be? Come with me. And let's try and find out. I don't know why I'm speaking like this. Oh, that cider was so good. It was good, was it? Very good. <laughs> oh my god, what the fuck is that? That's what you get. You get scared of the pig. What was that? <laughs> That's Mr. Pig. He doesn't like it when people get piggy about their cider. It's something we brought uh, for the pimp my bride. Oh, no. <laughs> That's what you get. That's what you get when you have your cider. And don't let me have any. <laughs> Pig, Mr. Pig kills you. <laughs> no, no, Mr. Pig, no. Um, okay, let me find some place we can go to make crafts. And so, while Charlotte continues her search for an art form for me to butcher, we first stop off for lunch at Ajino Sapporo, a local ramen restaurant with a very unique take on the dish. Enter miso curry milk ramen, a dish with a name so long you'd finish saying it just in time for dessert with a tantalizing blend of creamy and silky rich broth and just the slightest kick of curry spice. It's perhaps the only dish delicious enough that I can physically stomach after yesterday's mega bowl of tuna PTSD. Oh, oh man. 
Oh, look at that. That is so big. It smells amazing. It really does. Yeah. So this is, as you know, Sapporo, the ramen shop, flavor of Sapporo. And it's probably the most famous ramen dish in all of North Japan. And what's inside it, Shana? I always lose track. <laughs> Miso curry milk ramen with butter. Lovely hell. Everything, basically. basically. <laughs> everything, but all the flavors of Hokkaido, right? Hokkaido yeah. is famous for its dairy food. So you've got the butter, you've got the milk as well. Um, and also soup curry is a big deal in Hokkaido. Yeah, anything that keeps you warm because it's so cold here, right? It smells amazing. Mm. And you can smell it, dear viewer. And it's burning my hands. <laughs> my favorite thing about this dish though is the butter on top here melts throughout kind of the eating. So it yeah. melts into the ramen. It Makes gives it nice. It's so creamy. It does. It looks so good. You've always got to start with the broth though. This is breakfast ramen. This is my first ever breakfast ramen. Whoa. It's, got, it's not that spicy, it's got a subtle kick to it, right? The noodles are interesting. Apparently they're egg noodles, curly egg noodles. Not your typical ramen noodle, right? Mmm. 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 <laughs> so good. Also, it's ridiculously busy. We got here at 11.05. The shop opens at 11. I was like, don't worry, we'll get seats. And it was a battle to actually get yeah. them. So get here early if you do want to try it. Oh, that's so good. Mm. Have you improved your slurping skills yet? My slurping skills? <laughs> the best there is, goddammit. <coughs> you think he's faking it, but he actually really sucks. No, I don't suck. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've determined what the issue is. You put it in your mouth, and then you try to slurp it while it's already in your mouth. So right. Don't do that. <laughs> this is good advice. Neither Natsuki or Realtor, they never help me, they so, just laugh at me. So, so put a little bit, right? Just a little bit. No oh, I did it. Mm. I bloody did it. Oh, that's going everywhere. <laughs> I've got it all over myself now. So a little bit. Just a little bit, and then suck it up. There was a slight improvement. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Right, we're gonna need a bigger box of tissues. <laughs> Why did I wear white? <laughs> You're stuffed. A lot of bean sprouts on here. Yeah. Do you like bean sprouts? I love them. In ramen, they're kind of like a, a palate cleanser. Yeah, right? they're refreshing. Mm. They balance out the, I guess, the richness of the ramen. And the butter has melted into them, so they're exceptional. There's nothing that can't be improved by adding a pile of butter on. The soup is so nice. The soup alone would make a good dish. Slightly spicy, but not, no, not really spicy. Don't worry, if you're gonna eat spicy stuff. Best of all, on a broad Japan, everybody gets fed. Look at the whole team devouring the curry miso milk ramen. Look at them all. And there's Lucas over there. And look, there's Ross. And they're joining <laughs> us for the next leg. You can see them, but you can't hear them. We separate the, uh, the peasants with this plastic sheet here. It's like delicious prison. <laughs> when do you get out? So at the end of the meal, Charles was like, <laughs> I didn't get any curry miso milk grab at all for my shirt. And then it's There like, was nothing. I was showing tons. Paul. I was like, check it out, nothing. And then all of a sudden, like on the side Chris so is yellow. sitting on while I wasn't looking, oh, he sprays yeah. me. I spray you, don't I? <laughs> yeah. quality slurping skills. What a mess, God. Look at my nice, clean, curryless shirt. Oh, yes. Really nice rum look. I like the way it's subtly spicy. It has a nice little, nice little kick to things. Anyway, we're gonna let Charlotte excavate. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my god, what's a mess this is. Butter coursing through my veins once again. We're now ready to head off out the city to take on the challenge of mastering a Japanese craft in a day. The Sugado Traditional Craft Centre in Tomiyama offers a collection of local crafts from around North Japan, with experiences run by local experts where you can try making them yourself. And today, I'll be desecrating the fine art of Kokeshi, a small wooden doll with intricately painted faces and features that was traditionally a children's toy. Our teacher may think he's seen all there is in the world of Kokeshi, but I can assure you, he's never seen anything quite like what I'm about to unleash. So here's our blank canvas, and here's one that looks good. Yeah, mine won't look like this when I'm done, but I'm gonna draw Charlotte, she's gonna draw me, and in just a minute you're gonna see this inanimate wooden block turned into something that defies the laws of art. It's gonna look so good, so. <laughs> Something like this. I think when people see this Kokeshi doll, there's going to be no doubt as to who it is. <laughs> Michelangelo, Da Vinci, Van Gogh, and now abroad in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> that looks okay. 
dick. Fucks me an arm. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> All right, so we've just finished our Kukashi dolls. Charlotte's done me, I've done Charlotte. And now for the big reveal. We're starting with Charlotte. What have you got? The back looks good. Oh, wow. It's got the little beard <laughs> and the eyes. <laughs> the eyes? To be fair, it looks, it actually looks like a real Kukashi doll. I don't know about that. I think it was, I think if it was on a shelf. I think the issue is that you only wear black. Uh, yeah, but that's what makes me so distinctive and cool, like this Kukashi. <laughs> don't know about the cheeks though. But Look at the cheek. It's probably the most accurate I mean, part of the thing is the cheek. At least I put some effort into your one that actually made it look like you. Look at that facial hair. Spot on. Anyway, that's good. And then this is your one. So look at the back. Look at that love heart. Isn't that nice? That's a nice. symbol of our love. That's a good start. And then we slowly turn it. Now I painted some apples. <laughs> I painted some apples on the front and a bit of the ink ran a bit too much. Oh God. So I want, when you look at it, I want you to remember that <laughs> because here we are. Oh my God. <laughs> Fucking hell. It looks like you. Jesus Christ. Every better. time he draws me, it looks like this. Every single time. Lips, nose, a cheek that got out of hand. That, that was not my fault. The paint ran up see, your face. Let me see. Be What's like that a, red thing? A cheek. It was a, it was a dimple. Is that what my makeup was? And then it went like? wrong. It's supposed to be your dimple here. <laughs> That's a dimple. And then the apples got a bit fucked up. Not gonna lie. <laughs> that was unfortunate. So the it, it sort of, pretty cool looking, It ran actually. down here and he had to like file it down. But there you go. The apples have like artistic flair. I'm impressed by the oh. apples. Impressive, right? <laughs> well, which do you think is the most accurate, guys? Let us know in the comments. It better fucking be this one. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I think we should ask the pro. Should we ask the professional? Yeah, let's ask him which one looks the most like us. See my sim. Need to do the show. Oh, oh. They both look like us. He can eat it. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so he was he was very generous. Winner. Yeah. Winner by by a hair though. He was like, oh, they're both pretty good. Both A for effort. But uh, there you go. Put this Keep on that. the top of the Christmas tree. That's right. Really glad we did this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, was kind of, it was kind of fun. It was really fun. Honestly, I, I would like to do it again and do it properly. I've learned a lot today yeah. about how not to paint a Kokeshi doll, to be honest. <laughs> pretty much. Well, people say I'm not crafty. Take a look at that. Shut up, because I'm crafty. I'm very crafty indeed. And that's get out of here. Well, I must admit, I do feel a little bit guilty. The man, the man looking on in just shock and horror. Are you saying you didn't try your best? I tried my best, but my best clearly wasn't fucking good enough, was it? <laughs> he, I, <laughs> he was very nice though. I was like, Daijobu this guy. He was like, he didn't say like, not Daijobu, get, <laughs> get out of my country. He was like, oh yeah. He did yeah. hesitate a little bit. Oh my god. He did the symbol of Almory, put the apples on there. It doesn't look like an apple, it looks like a bomb's gone off. There was an attempt. It's so, it's so What's unfortunate. What's the red streak down the middle? Am I dying? I was supposed to be like a coat. A coat. Oh, a coat. How can you not tell? <laughs> but now we're heading over to see the Tachi Nefto, the tallest, uh, tallest paper floats on the planet, actually. Yeah, I've never seen them. Chris is amazed. He won't stop talking about them, so they must be very good. They're very good. You kind of look at it and you're like, how the hell did they build this in a year? Like the sheer height of it, right? I'm intrigued. And I think not only you and I are going to see it, but I want the whole team to see this. Yeah. It'd be really interesting capturing their yeah, they'd reaction. Like it. And then people will be like, wow, Chris is nice. He lets his editors out of the vehicle <laughs> for more than five minutes to look at a thing. There you go. Charity work, a charity work for my team. <laughs> Take a look at this. This building looks like the old BBC building in London meets the space shuttle building from NASA. It's so big and they need it because the Tachi Nefta are inside. Come and take a look. This is ridiculous. And this is it. This is insane. Look at the size of it. This is the tallest paper float in not just Japan, the whole world, towering at 23 meters. And wait a minute, this isn't it, is it? This isn't it at all. But it's, it's nearly as tall as Godzilla, so it's pretty big. But hey, the real deal is over here. 
And look, because I'm nice, the whole team's come here to see the Tachi Nebida. And they can react to it and we can see what they think. Are you excited? Yes. Are you excited? So excited. Are you excited? Ecstatic. Well, what are we fucking waiting for? Let's go. They're smaller than I expected. Inside. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, holy shit. These are the world's tallest paper floats. They're floats, right? They don't just sit inanimately. People actually pull them, push them through the town. 23 meters tall, I think they're 19 tons, and they're astonishing. And we can actually go up the spiral staircase and get a look from the top. I honestly believe the Tachi Nebta are one of the three things you need to see in Tohoku to really appreciate what makes North Japan special. The history, the culture, the craftsmanship, right? It's really hard to put it onto words, really hard to put it on the screen, how damn impressive this is. When you stare this terrifying guy in the face, you truly appreciate the scale of it all. And um, it really is magnificent. Come here, see it for yourself. You won't regret it. But where's the real craftsmanship? Is it the Tachi Nepeta? 23 meters, 19 tons, an entire year in the making. Or is it our Kokeshi dolls made in just 25 minutes? <laughs> it's definitely not the Kokeshi dolls. Yeah, it's definitely Let's not these. Yeah. <laughs> Terrifying. Yeah. Well, what has your highlight of the day been, Charlotte? You've done so much. In Aomori? Ooh, it's gonna have to be the cider, I think. It was so good, so good. I don't even drink much alcohol, but that was like The bit that I didn't get to enjoy. One day. We'll come back for this festival because I really want to see it and then you can have some alcohol. Absolutely, yeah. I've been here two or so three times, nice. but I've never been to the festival. Yeah. But uh, for now, guys, many thanks for joining us thanks on this episode watching. of Journey Across Japan Non-Stop North. We'll be back for the next episode as we continue our journey across Aomori tomorrow to Hirosaki. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Apple pies. Apple pies for all. We'll see you there. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe to Abroad in Japan, the greatest channel since sliced bread. And Charlotte. <laughs> and Charlotte. <laughs> Trade accents with your guest for a day. Do I have my money back as well? No. Give me the fucking money. I've got to get stamps for my stamp collection.